Welcome to the Along the Way podcast, your place to become an equipped and encouraged parent so you can experience God's absolute best for your family. Hey everyone, this is Tim and Bruce with the Along the Way podcast, and today we've got a special episode for you. This is actually the first part of our series where we had a conversation with a good friend of ours, April Swears, who's been, uh, I mean, she's a great communicator, been involved with ministry for a long time, and uh, there was just so much good content that, uh, you know, we split this up into two episodes. Yeah, it's really good and just helpful because we need to get away from our little cookie cutter strategies at times that kind of this one thing applies to all families. And I think this is a conversation that really blows a lot of holes in that. Yeah, no, it's a great episode for sure. And part two will be coming out next week. So check out part one of our conversation with April Swears. What's up, Bruce? How are we doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm feeling really good. Nice. Yeah. Well, we've also got a special guest with us today, April Swears. And April has been around the around Bell Shoals for a long time now and uh, been involved with various different ministries here at Bell Shoals. And April also has an amazing podcast called Her God Speaks. And she is also a mom of two, which I mean, of course, on a parenting podcast, you know, a nice plus to have. So we are excited to have April here with us today. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you know, so Bruce in April, we talk a lot on this podcast about um, establishing patterns. We talk about a position of advantage that parents have. That's right. I got to be honest with you, though, as a dad, a lot of times I try to establish those patterns. I try to use that position of advantage, and it sometimes feels like I'm not getting the (laughs) results that I would expect from me doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, so one, join the club. Yeah. I think that's fair to say. <laughs> Join the club. Um, so a position of advantage is is almost just believing God's design, what he, how he has set up, you know, generally, um, the, how he has positioned parents, what he's created parents to be and to do. So we are in a position of, of advantage. The reason we're having to say that so much is because we don't feel that often. Mm. We don't. I think if you you talk to a number of parents, um, and we even as we were talking beforehand, like this is it's a position of weakness for a lot of us. We we just don't feel the wind in our sails all the time, and every now and again, the Lord allows us to see some winds along the way. But all in all, as our kids are developing and they're in process, we're in process. God's using those relationships to change us, to change them, and. In all of it, the hope is that, you know, we're all being um, conformed into what God ultimately wants for for all of us. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's easy for um, us not to feel the advantage that God has God has placed us in. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, in you know, I, like I said, for me, I feel that on you know sometimes even a, a daily basis and. In April, I'm wondering for you, you know, is that something that you can relate to of, you know, as a parent, you're trying to do the right thing, but maybe things don't always go the way that you would expect. Yeah. I remember when my, so I have two boys, 13 and eight. So when my eight-year-old was, gosh, just probably a couple weeks old, we had this book that we had used with our firstborn Mm -hmm. about like sleep patterns. And basically if you do all these things, you're going to have an amazing sleeper and everything's going to go great. And it worked well with our first kid. And I remember Landon was home for maybe a couple weeks. I had the book kind of on the um, the changing table, and I'm changing him. And as I'm changing him, he has this big explosive like blowout style thing, and it gets all over this book. Mm-hmm. I mean, he literally pooped all over the book. <laughs> that was all about the results. If you do A and B and C and D, then you are going to get a kid that's just like this. And um, it wouldn't be until five years later that we actually got Landon tested and diagnosed and found out he has a a mood disorder. He um, also meets all the criteria for autism spectrum disorder. So he has some actual, like, legitimate um, neurological challenges. But for the longest time, we just thought, you know, he was the strong-willed kid or he... So, yes, 100% yes, I, I have... I have the child, and I have a lot of people listening to this, have the child that has, whether it's literally or metaphorically, pooped all over the strategies. <laughs> <laughs> and you've, you've tried so hard, and you put in the work. And it's really hard when you put in the work. You're looking around. You're like, I'm putting in a lot more work than most people are. You know, yeah. I've, I've read the books. I am working hard. I am. And, and you, get, 
you get none of the results. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, 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 it's really disheartening. It's really hard. Yeah. Yeah, And on, I think on varying like levels and obviously there, I mean, it can run the spectrum, but I think where April's, where April is, I mean, a lot of us can find ourselves because we, we're not parenting because we don't want to see something. Yeah. We're not parenting because we, we're not expecting some type of, for lack of a better term, product at the end, yeah. you know, yeah. what do, what do we want? And, and uh, so, you know, we can do this kind of this factory kind of assembly line kind of process sometimes, you know what, it starts here and, and we have a good sleeper. And then if we do this and we inject this, and then this will set us up for teenage years and yada, yada, and then they're going to get good grades and get that scholarship. They're going to excel in sports. They're going to be happy. They're going to have, a, they're going to be successful. You know what I mean? That's at the end of the day. And you can write a heck of a Christmas letter every year, <laughs> exactly right? right? And talk about all the wonderful things they do. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> so, uh, but it's not a factory assembly line. No. You know, these are not neutral kind of things and things that we're getting to kind of manipulate and assemble. Um, you know, we've, we talked about, you know, on here a lot that, you know, it's, you know, our kids are different. Families are different. And, and that's a real thing. Mm-hmm. It's a real thing. And uh, I don't think that we give our, we really maybe give the grace we need for different families that we're seeing. You know, and sometimes we're thinking, well, it worked for, it worked for me. Mm-hmm. Why doesn't it work for you? Well, because my kid is not like your kids and they don't grow up in your home and you're not their, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, yeah. Um, every home is different. Um, So there are things that we all want and that are all the same. So we won't make it sound like, you know, that no, we can't be helped by anybody, but it's easy to fall into the category of do these things and you will get this result. And when we don't get those results, then we feel like we're not at the position of advantage. We feel like we're failing. Um, We feel like we're doing something wrong. It's doing something wrong. So, I just want to just throw this out here, okay? There's no such thing as a good parent. Can I say that? Yeah. All right. I just you might wanna... make some people upset. <laughs> doesn't mean you're wrong. <laughs> you know, I think that, I think what would be helpful sometimes instead of trying to be a good parent is to really just try to be a faithful one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's strong. Try to be a faithful parent. And so, and I think with faithfulness, we're, we're already setting the stage that, you know what? I'm a broken vessel. I'm a, I'm a sinful person. There's already something wrong with it. I need to I need to rely and lean on something else in order for what we're really wanting for our children to be affected in their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I think concentrating and focusing on being faithful, is, you know, are the things that kind of keep us going, mm-hmm. persevering, enduring all of those kinds of things. If we're trying to be a good parent then we have to grade that somehow and you only grade it by results. Mm-hmm. And when you don't see the results, I'm not a good parent. Yeah. So what, man, that's such a, such a difficult mindset shift, I think. Mm-hmm. So then what is the goal? You know, when, when we look at our kids and we look at, you know, they've, they've, I've got four and each, each one of them, I feel like I have to have a different measuring stick for because they're all unique and they're all, different. So then what is my goal as a parent? You know, maybe we have a parent that is like, okay, I, I want to be faithful. Okay. I'm going through a season where, you know, I have this child where I have to have a very different set of standards for it feels like, um, what's the long-term goal. And then what are even the daily goals that parents can look to for that? Hmm. I mean, I, gosh, I, a few years ago, I would have said Christlikeness and, you know, that they are kind and that they are, you know, all this thing. And those are certainly the goals. But I think at the end of the day, there's, I'm realizing there's so many things that I cannot control. Yeah. Um, you know, we're moving into the teenager stage with my oldest and that's really hitting home. I'm like, mm. oh, I kind of want to go. I, I didn't love the young child stage, but I'm like, it was really easy to just like pick out all your clothes and tell you what to do and plan your whole life. And um, at, at this stage in parenting, I'm realizing the goal is for me to be formed by the person of Jesus, for mm-hmm. me to, 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 for me to possess the, the love and the joy and the peace and the patience, for me to love well, for me to um, pursue, uh, pursue the Lord faithfully, for me to be the one. And, and then, 
you know, do I have goals and ambitions? Of course. But at the end of the day, there's, I'm realizing there's just not a lot I can control. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do have, I do have some control over my own, my own pursuits, my own relationship with the Lord, my own cultivation of my own heart and my cultivation of my own, um, um, quality. So I know this is a parenting podcast and we're going to be looking at what do we want for our kids? Um, but I'm at a place where I'm, I've had to let go of a lot of those goals because I honestly, if I think too far beyond a week with my youngest who mm-hmm. has some really significant challenges, I'm all of a sudden catastrophizing his whole life. Like we don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he'll ever, he may live with us forever. I don't know. I have no idea what, but I do know that I can continue to love well and, 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 and pursue the kind of heart that, um, that I need to have to, to care for a child, particularly one that has such significant challenges. Yeah. So, and this is, that's part of a parenting podcast where, where parents are still people, Mm -hmm. (laughs) we're people in process. And so, you know, with your, with your, your, your journey and, you know, you've talked about your youngest, um, you know, just with a variety of, of, of neurological challenges mm-hmm. and things of that nature. And then you have this teenager, right? Mm-hmm. This budding teen, you know, like these are, you know, for lack of a better, like different ends of the spectrum, if you yeah. will, that require different amount of energy and time. Um, how does the, how does the balancing of that How's that in terms of your your formation, kind of your the routines in your home, the pat, all those kinds of things? How's that? How's that playing? How do you feel like that plays out in your house? Um, very, very, in a very complicated way. Um, when you have a child that has significant needs, the other child or children, just by there's no matter no matter what you do, like they get shortchanged, um, and I mean. My oldest was five when our youngest came along. And so I think for this whole five year, that whole year, he's just like on his iPad because I had this very difficult baby and, and you know, it, it was a, a lot. Um, so I think where we're at is just having very honest conversations. He's 13. He can have honest conversations. He can share how, how he feels. Um, I ask a lot, a lot, a lot. So how did you feel when that happened, you know? Your brother had a really hard day, and it really consumed a lot of our attention. It sucked all the joy out of our whatever family outing or, or whatever. Um, how are you feeling about that? And he's not a wordy guy. I'll get, like, one thing. Um, but then, I'm like, well, I feel really sad about it because I really wanted this to be, you know, a special thing for us. I really wanted you to enjoy I feel sad that, once again, um, we've had to focus so much attention on on your brother and, and haven't. So we're getting better at just having, let's just put it all out there. Like we are not, I mean, if, if my metric is evenly distributing myself among my children, giving everybody what they need, like we are failing. We are not measuring mm-hmm. up to that just by virtue of that is the way it is right now. But if we can have honest conversations and continue to do the work of repairing, right, of coming back around and saying, well, that didn't go the way we wanted it to go again. Um, let's all talk about how we're feeling. Let's talk about what's going on. Um, and then validating those emotions. Um, and when you have someone in your, in your family who requires a lot of care, there's going to be resentment buildup, right? So there are certain things that are not okay in our home. You cannot be unkind to your brother. You cannot say hurtful things. You cannot push. You cannot... Um, but <laughs> uh, uh, I, I cannot go in with the expectation that my boys are best friends. Hmm. That, that's, that's not, hopefully one day we'll kind of get through. But right now, um, it's a very complicated relationship and a very complicated dynamic. And so just having empathy for that, lots of honest conversations about that, allowing him to feel what he feels and, you know, sometimes there's shepherding Oh wait, Like, that's, I see you feel that way. Here's kind of where we need to get. Let's process that together. But um, that's where we are. It's just doing a lot of talking and a lot of feelings work. Um, because right now, we can't, we can't balance things out right now. It, it's just, 
you know, kind of where we're at. Have there been specific things that you can look to that have helped during this season, whether it's for you as a parent, like has there been a support system there or, or even for your, for your kids, have there been things um, just outside elements that have helped through that? Yes. Um, it's been interesting. You know, the Lord has brought people along the way. I like what you did there. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Along the way. That's see, right. See, you didn't do it on purpose. I'm sorry. I know. I'm just, just so good at this, this that it, you know. Um, but yeah, he's brought people along the way. What's been challenging is, be, is, is that they haven't been the kind of resources I would necessarily be looking for, right? So, um, I've had to, I've had to come up, uh, 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 find some new categories, right? So I, I have a very strong conservative Christian background. I grew up in the church. I know all the, the church lingo. I also am deeply passionate about theology. Mm-hmm. So I have all of my really nice orderly theological categories. Um, so when I, God bought pre brought people along that were like, Hey, um, you should learn about neuroscience and what's actually happening in your child's brain. Um, and what that opened me up is to, to, to a lot of books and resources that felt very woo-woo to me. You know what I'm talking about? Like woo-woo, mm-hmm. like more of a gentle parenting kind of world where you're taking into account the whole person and what's going on in their body and like all this stuff that honestly, even five years ago, I would have been like rolling my eyes at. Mm-hmm. But along the way, I've had to, okay, well, let's give this a try. Not, I don't know if I can buy into this, but what's, what I've learned is that, well, of course, those things are helpful because God created our bodies. Right. He created our brains, and this is all a part of his common grace that he's given us. So um, I've had a couple of friends that have, uh, they're a little bit ahead of me in, in this, this process um, that have just pointed me in the right direction. But it's been a lot of just learning more about neuroscience and the intersection of neuroscience and faith and the in um learning about just the whole person brain body connection and because that's a lot of it's it is central to Landon's challenges what I'm learning is it's actually central to every human Mm -hmm. experience um so it's helped us a lot with our our neurotypical child as well so but yeah it's just been being open and that was really hard for me we've had to embrace a whole different parenting paradigm um, a lot of terminology I was completely unfamiliar with, uh, and it's been, it's, it's been a challenge and it's a really big challenge because you usually have one parent that's like more feet on the ground, hands on. I'm, I stay home with my kids, so I'm reading all the books. I'm going to all the therapies. I'm listening to all the podcasts. I'm learning, learning, learning. It's also part of who I am. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm kind of obsessed with like, I need information. And so then you have my husband who's, you know, he's at work. The majority of the day, he comes home. I'm like, I read this book, and this is what's going on in his brain, and this is how we need to change the way. So that's usually really hard for the other parent who's not as hands-on, who also has this very strong, like, Christian categories for this is how we do things. Um, and, I mean, just the – I don't even know. Like, the Lord just – allowed my husband to come alongside and, and allow me to take the lead and say, this is what I think we need to do. And he was just on board. And, um, but again, it was just like, nah, I mean, I'm, when I say paradigm shifting, I'm talking about like, we really had to make a lot of hard, hard changes. And the way we think about um, discipline and the results that we're looking for and what are, what are we after here? What is the goal? You know, so that's been... Hard and beautiful. It's helped us in every relationship we have. You know, when we started off talking about kind of results-based, you know, and, you know, you had this book that was pooped all over, right? (laughs) Because it it is kind of a, it's, you know, a formula. Mm -hmm. And it'll, it'll bring forth these kinds of results. And a lot of times what happens is we lean so much on the law of these things. And we just think if I do these things... And what happens is that sometimes I think that we turn off the part of our brains, the part of um, we don't look at the spirit Mm -hmm. and have to discern anything. Yeah. We don't have to exercise wisdom because we feel like 
somebody's already done this. They gave me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why do I need to pray about this? Why do I need to? I just apply it, okay? Yeah. And I can do that. And they sold a million copies, and they have conferences, and they have, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and some of those books are great. I'm not saying, like, just throw that out completely, but at the same time, you're in a, you're, you, you're where a lot of us need to be more so and just, okay, what are the particular needs for my children? Mm-hmm. And Lord, help me mm-hmm. to discern and be wise you know was the thing about wisdom is it always calls for the moment that's why you might do one thing one year and a different thing the other year one thing one month and then you change it the next one it doesn't mean you're not consistent what makes you consistent are the checks you go through to get to the decision that's what makes you consistent but sometimes wisdom just leads you to make different calls and you're what i'm hearing is like you're having to like okay Taking in the information, um, obviously running that through. Yeah, you got to uh, weed through it. That's right. Yeah, for sure. Weed through it still, still, but and then you have to like, okay, what Lord lead us, direct us. What's what do we need to do today? What do yeah. we need to? Because you're like, you know, I don't know what we're going to do next week. I kind of right. want to get that yeah. far ahead, but Lord, I need wisdom for today, and um, that speaks a little bit to that because I'm sure that's playing a part in just how you were saying. You know what this is. A big part of this is just what God's doing in my life as a parent, mm-hmm. um, which is obviously spilling over into the lives of your kids. And oh, that's, yeah. that's a, mm-hmm. um, we could easily get in trouble just saying, you know, well, I'm here for my kids. Well, we've said this before. It's like, you know, God has your kids in your life for you as well. Um, so yeah. there's a, God can do a lot of things at once and he's, he's after something. And just talk about that dynamic of just getting all that information, learning to be just exercising wisdom uh, when it comes to parenting. Yeah, I think, you know, I've, anybody who is any in any way familiar with, with, with what the Bible conveys about the relationship between, between, between God and, and us, it's just the, the essential nature of dependence. And so I, from the very beginning of parenting, talked about it's, it's a dependent, it's, it's, a, it's a practice of radical dependence on the Lord to lead and to guide and to, to do in, in you and in your children what you can't do on your own. <laughs> what I realized when, when Landon came along and the biggest gift he's given us is basically I realized I had no idea what I was talking about. I, did, I thought I was like the queen of dependence, but really I was God's trusty sidekick. And like I read these 15 books and I, you know, asked my child, I, do all like the good, like we go through the catechism, he can answer the questions, he memorizes scripture, you know, and then you have a child that comes along that's just, I mean, they're just different abilities. Mm -hmm. He's delightful. We, he's just such a joy for us and in our family, but he, he can't do the same things in the same ways. And so what it's, the gift it's given me is, is just exposing that, yeah, I was kind of all talk when it came to the whole dependence thing. And now I'm like, really am, right? And, and of course, now with our um, neurotypical child, we're moving into the teenager stage, which, oh my word, talk about like dependence. There's just less and less and less control over your child's decisions and what they do and what they think and what they listen to, all the things. Um, so it really, really has led me to a place of, wow, we really are so dependent on the Lord. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to part one of this conversation with April Swears. Part two comes out next Tuesday, and I'm telling you, it was an incredibly impactful conversation to be a part of. So you do not want to miss it next Tuesday, part two of our conversation with April Swears.